Hi, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Excellent. Well, I'm Joya DeVita, and I'm here with uh, Real Chicago and Real 360, and I'm here with Allison Hammer, um, writer. Uh, we just did a wonderful piece on you for um, International Women's Day. I don't think it was on International Women's Day, but it was, it was a great piece, and um, now we're going to talk to you about your new book coming out. So Thank you so much. Uh, just went off. So let's get down to your book first and foremost that's coming out on the 13th, right? Yep. Very soon. So um, that was about, it's, was your first book also about genealogy and 23 and me and that kind of thing? No, um, my first book, um, I actually have it here too. Um, my first book um, was You and Me and Us and it came out three weeks into the pandemic. So this is my second pandemic rele book release. Um, but You and Me and Us is the story of a, of a mom, of a woman who works in advertising. And um, it tells the story of her, her relationship. She's a difficult relationship with her daughter. And it's the story of um, the way their relationship evolves as they go through a really difficult summer losing someone in their family. So there are similar themes with mothers and daughters and, and family dynamics, but the, the two books are pretty different. Oh, that's cool. So it's not like a continuation. Of no. And then your new book is about genealogy and 23andMe. Yes, little pieces of me. For that subject, little pieces of me. I love um, it. Thank you. It was not the first title. Um, originally, the main character, her name is Paige. So it's about a woman. Um, her name is Paige. Also works in advertising. You know, write what you know. Um, but this woman finds out through a, um, a website, kind of like Ancestry.com, that um, she gets a, an email with a parent-child match with a man who's not her father. So the story is about her search for identity and what that news means for her, what it means for her relationship with her father who had recently passed away, um, with her mother who she had a difficult relationship with, and um, just what that all means for herself. And then it goes back in, in present day, between present day and the 1970s, where um, her mom, her dad, and her DNA dad all went to college at the University of Kansas. Wow. That, I love that, um, you know, the two timelines, because like, I feel like that would be a good movie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sure that you have your thoughts of wanting to, um, you know, make a movie, but who wouldn't? Yeah, no, that would be a dream. Um, I actually have a, um, my agent has a film co-agent for, um, for both books. So nothing has happened quite yet, but it would be just like a, it would be a dream to, yes. to have it, you know, to have my work come to life on screen. It would be amazing. An adaptation. Yeah. So have you done this uh, genealogy and discovered any hidden secrets in your family or is it just inspired by others? I personally have a friend who went through a very similar thing and had no, she has a whole new family now. And wow. Her 40s. It's yeah, it's hard. it's um it's so common now and I think that it's because you know DNA used to be something that was like used in like in in by the police and detectives and for you know like criminal cases and things like that. But now it's so accessible that anybody can, you know, like spit in a tube and and find out their DNA. So I think that there's a lot of secrets and things that people assumed would never be uncovered that that have been. Um, but the, where the book came from, the idea for the book came from is a friend of mine, this happened to a friend of mine and it was back in 2017. So the, the, the writing in the book world takes a very long time for things to, to come out. But I, um, walked into a, um, into a bar and saw a friend of mine and I said, hello. And she said, you'll never guess what I found out through ancestry.com. And I went through a few, like, you know, political and um, and historical figures that I had a feeling she wouldn't want to be related to. And she's like, kept saying no. And I'm like, okay, tell me. That's good. And, <laughs> yeah. And she told me that she had gotten this email. And, you know, as a writer, my brain first, like right away went to like, ooh, that sounds like a really interesting premise for a story. So this is not her story, but it was definitely, that was the spark that inspired it. Um, and as for myself, with um with like taking a dna test i i figured i felt like i i had to do it like i felt like i can't have this book out in the world and not do it right um, but i didn't do it alone i roped my entire family into it so um last year for the holidays or i guess two years ago now i um gave all the adults in my family um ancestry.com kits so i had them i handed them identical packages all at the same time and said to open them 
And my dad's response was to get out his own identical packages. Um, he had gotten my sister, um, my brother-in-law and I 23 and me. So I did both okay. ancestry and 23 and me. And so far, no surprises, but I right. swear. That's good. That's good. And did the 23 and me and the ancestry match? You know, they were very similar. I think it depends. The differences, like some of the different connections depend on who does what. So if you have like a distant relative that does one, you'll show up. I think, I don't know if you'll show up on both. Um, but they both said that I was 99.5% Ashkenazi Jewish, and I think 0.3% Eastern European. So there's no surprises with my lineage. <laughs> but I tell you, every time I get an alert, like, you you know, we've added new connections. I have a moment of like, it's okay. It's just a book. It's just a book. But, um, but it is something that has happened to, to so many people. And I think that there are all sorts of, you know, some people have had new families, some people have had like not such great results from it. And so I think it's, it's very real. Um, and I wanted to make sure that I, you know, when I was telling the story, I wanted to make sure to, to acknowledge just the different, um, the different emotions and things involved in, in that process of finding out that your ancestry isn't who it is and whether or not that changes who you are as a person and how you see yourself. Absolutely. So um, you traveled around quite a bit, uh, said in your article, seven, seven places, is that correct? Something like that before you settled in Chicago, you went to school in Florida. I actually moved away from Florida in 2015. Okay. So had a little Florida connection, but it was probably a few years before <laughs> that you left Florida. <laughs> I, so yeah, I've lived, I think the count is nine. I think that I've lived in nine cities. So I moved along, around a lot. Um, I'm originally from St. Louis and I started out college at the University of Kansas where the story takes place partly. So it was fun to just like go back there in my, in my memory and, and write the campus. I mean, before I was born, but still back in the early 1970s. And um, then, you know, moved, went to University of Florida. I went to the Creative Circus in Atlanta for a portfolio school. And after that, I moved all around from New York to Boston to Pittsburgh, D.C. for a while. And Chicago, um, actually, this is my second time in Chicago, but I, I think I'm here for good. That's great. And you're working in advertising. Yeah. So I, I like to tell people I have two full-time jobs. It really, you know, it does seem like in advertising is, you know, a very time-consuming and intense job. So um, the word balance doesn't always come into play. There are some times where, you know, I have to be more involved in work and less with writing. But um, I tend to, um, you know, work during the day and then write in the evenings and on the weekends. Great. And I wanted to ask you specifically about your every damn day writers. Yeah. No, so <laughs> but I didn't want to say it incorrectly. Yes, the every damn day writers. So through my own writing process, I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and try to listen to a lot of advice from people who have who have been there before. And one of the podcasts that I listen to um, was called it's it's still running. It's called the bestseller experiment. And in the first season, it had two men who decided to write. Um, they decided to write, edit, publish, and market a best-selling book in a year. And as part of their podcast, they had um, different author guests and publishing experts in like on every episode. And they would always ask for a piece of writing advice. And like nine out of ten times, the author would say to write every day. And I started doing that and I just, I firmly believe in it. My, so my first book, the first book I ever wrote, um, it's currently in a drawer, not published anywhere, but it took me 15 years to finish writing. And with You and Me and Us, my debut, it was the first time I participated in National Novel Writing Month, NaNoWriMo, which is an international program where writers around the world are challenged to write 50,000 words in the month of November. And I am very competitive in like weird ways. Like I have a sleep app um, and I like every night I'm, morning I wake up and I'm like, how would I do? Like I'm very like oddly competitive. And so I loved the energy and the camaraderie and the competition of that. And so I went from writing a book taking 15 years to taking two months. Wow. And that, yeah, it's crazy. And that's a lot because of writing every day and not editing as I go, just getting the words out there and going back to, to make them sing later. Um, but I had a group that during NaNoWriMo, we would kind of have daily accountability and daily check-ins. And when November ended, we didn't want the group to end. 
And so re- a few years ago, we um, opened it up to the public. So the Every Damn Day Writers on Facebook. We have over 500 members now. Um, it's for women writers. And every day we, we do different prompts for support and for check-ins and um, just to build community and support because writing can be a solitary um, activity, but the experience of it and the community of it is um, pretty incredible. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, another question. Now that things are starting to open up again, what are you most excited to get back to do? Like, you know, fun stuff. I, I'm sure you feel the gym is fun too, but, you know, entertainment versus... I, I am a big music fan. I love my live music and I miss going to shows. Um, I've been... Um, a friend of mine, Stephen Kellogg, is a musician who I'm actually writing a book with currently. Um, but he did virtual shows like once a week during the pandemic and... Um, a lot of musicians did things on Instagram. And so like, I feel like I was able to have like a taste of live music, but I cannot wait to like be in a venue and standing with friends and um, just listening to live music. I can't wait. And hugs. I miss hugs a lot. Yeah. Hugs, definitely. So what, what is one of the favorite, your favorite things about living in Chicago that you feel that you can't do in New York? I feel like Chicago is a like a hidden secret and I feel like people don't know how amazing it is and I'm kind of okay with that because I don't want like everybody to move here Um, but summers in Chicago like there's really nothing better like it is just it has everything it has it has the lake it has like the city it has it just has everything and winters are not fun but I feel like that's the price we pay to live here the rest of the year so I just Again, like this is, I, I moved away for two years and realized that Chicago's home. So I just, I love it. Oh, that's great. That's great. And um, your advertising, it's still, you're still working remotely? Yeah. Um, I, I work, I work at FCB Chicago and I, um, when we weren't going into the office, I had a great commute because I'm just a few blocks away. So I really miss the, you know, just the camaraderie of seeing everybody. We have a coffee bar at the agency. I miss the, you know, running into people and, and that sort of thing. But the agency, like every other agency, has been very focused on safety. And we've come up with a lot of, of really great ways to collaborate and work together. And I think they're starting to think about slowly, you know, easing things in. Like there's a few meetings and things like that that, um, that they're having safely in the office. But um, we're still pretty much firmly in the, the work from home. I want to circle back to your book and it's coming out on the 13th and you're doing an event also on the 13th. Like a- yes. Um, going on. Yeah. So last time I had five events across the country that were canceled um, because of the, of the pandemic and had to scramble to get things done on um, online and it was actually crazy the, um, the we had it on Zoom. It was supposed to be broadcast on Facebook, but it was the one week that like Zoom like cut off connectivity to Facebook. So it ended up being just like, I mean, technical difficulty after technical difficulty, but we moved the party to Instagram and it was great. Um, so this time we have time to plan and we know what we're doing. So um, it, we're partnering with three different local bookstores, um, Volumes Bookstore here in Chicago, um, Oxford Exchange in Tampa and Warwick's in La Jolla. And um, when people pre-order a book through any of those indie bookstores, they'll get on the day of launch, they'll get an email with a link to the virtual event. I'm going to be in conversation with a friend of mine, um, Kristen Harmel. She's a New York Times bestselling author. Her most recent book, The Book of Lost Names, is just incredible. Um, and then Stephen Kellogg, the musician I was telling you about, he's going to be hosting and playing a song. And I have, I've been looking for ways just to make it just a little bit more interesting and different. So I have three surprise guests planned that, um, that I'm not revealing yet, but um, I think it's going to be pretty fun. That sounds fun. And is that open to the public or only pre-order? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a ticket with purchase. Oh, so anybody, it's, it's open fun. to anybody who pre-orders. But um, okay. on my website, it's just alisonhammer.com and then slash launch party. It's links to all the places where you can um, get a book. Great. That sounds awesome. Yeah. Well, um, I guess that's, that's everything I wanted to cover with you today. And I really appreciate you taking the time to meet with me on Zoom. And I wish you all the success in the world with your book launch party. That sounds amazing. And I will probably have to check.
<laughs> yes, thank you so much. It's really good. Thank you so much. Oh, yay. Yes, please. <laughs> Little Pieces of Me by Alice Tanner. And thank you so much for meeting with me today. Awesome. Thanks for having me.